Oh, my computer crashed. Oh no, I've got a virus. Oh, no way, no internet connection. Do you need help? Call IT Mayday. 647-977-7113. ITMayday.com. Hi, you're listening to Linda Pinizzato, sponsored by Bayshore Health and Wellbeing, this wonderful radio show called The Condo Expert, here to give you information about condominiums. Ken Hutt, Director of Condo Doctors. You know, Ken, so tell me something. I know you're patent pending. Yes. So give me some insight. What, what's going on? What stage are you at now? Well, we're, we're patent pending because when we, when we looked at the condo doctors, we realized beyond just going in and doing the maintenance audits or, or, or maintenance checkup, if you will, on the individual units, we knew that it was critically important to get that information in the hands of the property manager so that it could be acted upon. Because like anything else, some people are responsible and others are not. So the property manager can force people to in fact do it. So to make sure we had a good system, we put together a process, a way of gathering and disseminating information that would be unique in the industry. And that's what we have done because it's so important. And I'll tell you what else is important. We talked about resale value. If you, when you sell a condominium unit, can go and produce a maintenance history of your unit, you realize you know how valuable that is. Exactly. You know, well, as you know, I've, uh, I've been a realtor since 1979. And uh, absolutely. I mean, in our real estate world, when we sell condominiums, um, we have status certificates, but, you know, they're approved by the lawyer. But to know a little bit and have a sheet of paper that gives that owner a sense of uh, knowledge and information, facts, facts, that's key. Yeah. Yeah, because they could put facts. We could have a section right on our Toronto, um, our, uh, on our MLS listings that pretty much state, you know, where that condominium is standing. That would be very important. Yeah, I think it's a very valuable thing, and it's so helpful to people. And if you haven't taken care of it, you're going to pay the price at the end. So mm-hmm. that's, you know. Well, you know, it, it expand knowledge. So it's, it's interesting because, I mean, we're not changing. Things aren't changing. Like, you know, every day you see another tower going up or under construction. <laughs> And, you know, so certainly uh, if you see what you see today, I can almost imagine in 10 years from now what you're going to see and how the style of living is. Yeah, I I think we're heading in that direction. If you look at Mm -hmm. a lot of Asian countries, I've spent a lot of time in Asia, and when you look at some of these countries, virtually everybody lives in a multiple unit building. 90, 95, 98% of the people. Well, I'm actually, I'm going to China in October. Oh, good. Well, you'll love it. I have to. Well, exactly. I want to see this. And, uh, you know, it's sort of a business pleasure trip. I think it's really important to to get some more awareness of of what's happening in the different Asian countries. Absolutely. Oh, that'll be... You'll find it very, very interesting. Were you down there? Did you go and visit them? I have spent a lot of time in my uh, my past life when when I was in in corporate America. I was uh, uh, international vice president of the construction information group for McGraw-Hill. So I travel. I've been to virtually every country, just just about every country on this planet. So, so you've seen everything. I've seen a lot. So can I ask you, there's some enclosures that uh, they have in uh, different parts of Europe for condominiums. I, I've heard a lot of great things about them. They, they give better protection for the concrete on the balconies because you're enclosing the balcony and you're creating more space for usage. So have you run across any of those kind of explosions? They slide open and close. Like a roll shutter? Yeah, yeah, yeah pretty much fan, like that. Yeah, they're beautiful. They've, they, they are, in my opinion, quite a bit ahead of us when it comes to energy conservation, efficiency, uh, security, just about everything. They really are. They're, uh, well, I met a company called Lumen. L-U-M-O-N, and I was intrigued by what they offered. And we actually were close to having one of the condo buildings in Toronto to have that um, type of enclosure installed, and we made it open and available to the owners. Uh, But we didn't get the takeoff yet because they're they're just not there yet. They don't understand that, you know, at $600 a square foot, adding in the extra space on the balcony increases the value of your unit if everybody was to do it. Big time. 
yeah. And I don't know about uh, about regulations if it has an impact on that. I don't. I don't know. Oh, you do. Um, you do have to get um, building permits. Uh, you have to go through the board of directors. You can't just do it on your own. Right. So you do need to get approval through the board, working with property management, and uh, uh, they would have to get their lawyers to include that on their legal documents of the corporation. Right. And but it's not that expensive for the benefits that it actually provides it, especially because uh, oh man, we're out of summer. <laughs> No. We're moving towards winter. We need enclosed balconies. Yeah, and that is you nice, know? and it does. It adds the square footage. It adds a lot to the appeal, the resale value, and on and on, and and the livability too. Well, that's it. Because how on an average a condo, a balcony would be what five by maybe eight. That's about forty square feet. Yeah, forty, maybe fifty. Yeah, not yeah, yeah. yeah so fifty, fifty square feet. And on an interior sale price on new construction is anywhere between six and seven hundred dollars. So if you take six to seven hundred dollars times that square footage, that's value that right now it's not calculated in the equation of, of a property. But you know, you could use it but if you call it living space, because mm-hmm. it's certainly not unit space. But you know some builders tried to do that. They actually were <laughs> selling their units and uh, including their balcony space and putting it out there so people actually thought that that was the unit space. They're tricky. I know when we moved into our building, a lot of the promises, excuse me, a lot of the promises that they had made did not come to fruition. Uh, There were changes, subtle changes and differences, some of them not so subtle, that that happened. I guess uh, with toilets now, you go in and you inspect all of the uh, toilets. And and you know why I'm mentioning that is like toilets are like a number one. You've got the dual flush. And, you know, in some senses, the dual flush is fantastic. But if it isn't a good dual flush toilet, it can actually give you lots of problems. Yes. So it's about quality. You have to put in quality, not just look at, uh, you know, water efficiency. And it's a shame because I think it's uh, maybe just the direction we seem to be going. But I talk to to people involved in the insurance industry specifically for condos. And they made a statement. They said, you know, in the old days, people always said, they look for the best. And the insurance company said, look, my policy does everything. And that's what people wanted. Right. Today, they said, in order to get a foot in the door, they've got to come in with a stripped down bare minimum. Right. And then when people realize that they're not as protected as they may want to be, then add on things. So it's a different mindset than it used to be. So, I mean, that's all called on your betterments. Uh, so on your own policy, it's yes. your betterments. And then on the building policy, you could have nothing covered. Uh, I mean, you could be so limited on the coverages that are going on within your unit, and you may not know about it. But I think if the condo doctor's in, you can pretty much, if you're working with the insurance company, you could look through the documentation and have an idea of what exactly is included. Yes, yes. That's the key. That's really, yeah, that is really important. important. Yeah, absolutely. So, you know, um, I'm thinking about liability. Uh, you know, we've established that if there's things that are breaking down and so on, but about lawsuits and liability. I mean, certain things have to have, like I'll give you, a, for instance, a building that I know what they did was after it was completely constructed and so on, and the board didn't pick it up, property management didn't pick it up, but they did not put the safety life system up on the rooftop to get up to the major, um, I'm trying to think of what the name of it was. It's the ladder that takes you up top. Mm -hmm. Unbelievable. And then you have to have certain types of hangers up there. And I don't have the technology. Anchors. Anchors, exactly. You've got to have your anchors um, for your window washers. So any building out there under new construction has to have these anchors in place. And they actually were forgotten. They were not in place. And people had all moved in and so on. And uh, it, it actually was found out when they finally at one point tried to arrange for their cleaners, their window cleaners to come in and ke- clean the, the whole building. I've seen even worse than that. I've seen anchors put in that you could pull out with your fingers. Yeah. Really? Yeah. Oh, so my God. Thank that's goodness. awful. That and is aw- you know, and that's so sad because that's putting, that's putting a hardworking person that's out there just trying to make a living, you know, for their family. Yes. You're putting them in danger. And the sad thing is that it was signed off by an engineering firm saying that everything was safe and okay. So you can imagine the kind of suit that that would have resulted in. 
So it seems like they need to have some kind of a maintenance program for these anchors. Maybe that should be something stipulated right on the Condo Act. Yeah, it'd be a great idea. You know, because it's, it's not even the safety of the building. It's about the lawsuit. Yes. Th this corporation could be sued terribly, never mind the sad person who ends up, you know, having his life jeopardized because of this situation. Well, there's a comment that a friend of mine, a chap named Bob Coffey, makes when he states, you don't save money by what you expect, you save money by what you inspect. And on a regular basis. Absolutely. And that is true. And, and that goes for anything that you own, really, if you think about it. Yes. You know, I mean, look at your vehicle. <laughs> That's look number at, one. And your teeth. And oh, all these, big I your mean, teeth. Like, yes. <laughs> it's incredible how often people will sacrifice their health, their well-being, and their safety by not simply going through having a regular check. Well, exactly, because there's all sorts of other things that could happen. Yes. Well, we're listening to Linda Pinizzato on The Condo Expert, sponsored by Bayshore Health and Wellbeing, and here at the radio station, The Hayes FM. <laughs>